Hi, I'm David Denemy, and welcome to Lambton College's Steam Boiler Lab. Today, we are going to do an overview of the area, and then we are going to look at all the major external components and identify what they do. The area behind me is the common boiler feed water supply for both boilers. We soften it, add chemicals, heat it in the blue tank, and it's pumped by one of the two boiler feed water pumps below it over to each boiler. Water supply enters here, and we go through a water softener, sodium zeolite, where all the calcium and magnesium salts are converted to sodium salts. And then the water is fed into our feed water tank. At the same time, we're going to pump chemicals from our chemical feed tank that, uh, for, to raise the pH and the phosphates and anti-foam of our feed water. And we have to batch this process, add water and agitate it with this agitator. The chemical tank is an actual deaerator. It's got a coil of steam inside it that heats the water so that if there's any oxygen or CO, it will vent out through the roof. We have a, a thermometer, temperature indicator on our feed water tank, the inlet valve, a sight glass, and then from the feed water tank, we pump boiler feed water. The large blue pump feeds boiler A. We have a strainer on the suction. This is a turbine pump. You can see it's slightly different than uh, centrifugal pumps over there where it discharges at the outside diameter through the discharge valve and over to the boiler. The smaller pump pumps boiler feed water to boiler B through that line. And you can see there's a normally closed pump AB bypass valve here that if either pump fails, we can still put boiler feed water into either boiler with either pump. The steam supply to the feed water tank comes down this line from the main steam header, passes through a strainer, and through this temperature control valve, through this line into the feed water tank. The feed water tank has a temperature sensor that feeds back to the temperature control valve. And we also on this system have a steam trap with a strainer, which goes to sewer. This is the stop start buttons for a boiler feed water pump. O is off. MAN stands for manual. When I turn to manual, the pump starts and runs continuously. If I were to switch it to automatic, the pump will only start if the boiler level is below its set point and it will automatically shut off when the boiler level gets up to its set point. This is the pump control station for boiler B. Uh, you've still got off, manual, and automatic. It has one extra button here for for in the manual position you need to physically push the start button to start it and that's the stop button there are three switches here the top one stops and starts the chemical tank agitator this one stops and starts the chemical tank pump and this one supplies the power to our water softener regeneration cycle it regenerates itself once a day automatically. On the main steam header coming from both boilers there is a strainer and a pressure control valve. The feed water to boiler A flows through this strainer into boiler A feed water pump which is a turbine pump that's a little bit unusual. 
through its discharge valve through that line to the boiler. The feed water enters B boiler feed water pump discharge through the smaller line to boiler B. Discharge is through the smaller line to boiler B, the small boiler. Also, both discharges are connected with boiler AB bypass valve, which is normally closed, but uh, in the event that either pump was to fail, we have pump AB bypass valve that connects the two discharges. So we can open that and put boiler feed water into either boiler with either pump. Water supplied A boiler comes from A boiler feed water pump and flows through this line. The water enters the boiler through this valve and we've got a non-return valve here and a downstream valve and it enters the steam drum of the boiler. Every day we analyze the feed water to see what kind of chemicals and contaminants we have in it and because it's very hot we cool it in this sample cooler and by carefully opening this valve we'll take a sample of the boiler feed water from the surface of a boiler. This line is called the surface blowdown, where any contaminants that might float on the surface of the water are continuously drawn off and go over to the blowdown tank. Also off this line is the supply to our sample cooler where our daily feed water analysis comes down on this line. When uh, blowing down, meaning draining anything from the boilers, it's liquid water at high pressure. It wants to flash to steam. And so the, the flow from the blowdown enters our blowdown tank through this pipe. And it's going to get hot. So this temperature sensor will control the flow of water that's sprayed in here to help keep the tank cool and it will overflow through here to sewer. Boilers are required to have two low-level shutdown devices. This is a low-level shutdown device bo for boiler A. It has a float inside that's connected to some mercury switches. Mercury in a little capsule. It's a good conductor of electricity and when the mercury touches the wires it completes the circuit. If for some reason the level in the boiler went low, the float would come down, it would tip the mercury switch so that there wouldn't be any electrical power anymore, and it would stop the flame to the boiler. This switch here works the same way, except it is if the level gets high enough to this point, it will shut down the boiler, meaning stop the flame as well. So you can see that. There's only a very narrow difference in height between a low-level shutdown and a high-level shutdown. 